Okay. All right. So Dave talks about masking being difficult, and it's not a walk in the park, but there's a lot of basic things you can do with masking that give you better results. So, for example, the Spitfire here was done with a single action airbrush. There's all masks on it, yet it's got a good camouflage pattern on it, and if you look at it, you'd think that it was done freehand. Same for the most part with the 109. Most of that is done with masks. Um, it takes some time. It's a little tedious sometimes to do, but you can get very good results in very clean things. So I'll just go over some of the, the materials that I use and uh, to start with. So everyone knows to me a tape. It's probably the most the best thing you can have in your, your uh, toolbox great, great to work on. And uh, I was coming to Dave earlier on. This is Tamiya, Tamiya tape. This is Tamiya sells it, but they call it uh, Kamoi tape. And it's slightly more fibrous than this is, but it still sticks just as well. So these are the two that I like most of all. Uh, painter's tape. I think Mike a while back gave us boxes and boxes of this stuff. So I'm still working on it after all this time. And it's a, it's a good backup one. And we all started out with this, I'm sure. So yeah. I would not put this on a model, but this, <laughs> this has a very important uh, use, which I will get to later on. So we'll circle back to that. Um, you also have, uh, to me has brought this out recently, they're masking tape for curbs which I haven't used as of yet. I hear it works quite it works well. Great. It works great. You know, now... Make nice tight curves with it. What I have done, though, is I've, I've learned other ways, you know, beforehand. I've, I haven't tried this out yet. I, I will sometime. Um, the other one that's popular now, or at least I've been getting more into, is painting the markings on the model. So on the, the Messerschmitt here, the crosses are all painted. So, and they were using a mask by this company, uh, Make Tar. You may see them advertised in some of the sites. And this one is for 48 scale Royal Air Force Spitfires. And they give you a whack of roundels and a whole set of codes. So, you can get about four or five airplanes out of it, uh, multiple use, and they're not that expensive. Um, and I'll talk about those later on. Uh, Montex is another one you'll see the name of, and they do, straight mask that replace all the kit markings in a Tamiya kit. So there's all the markings plus a canopy mask for a, a mosquito. So it's all in one package. And then their super masks are more complex schemes where they actually give you some decals for some of the, the <coughs> stuff that would just drive you up the wall. Although ironically I have one for a Lavochkin and it's got one of those Russian stars that's like red, white, red, that's, you know, and then the red star afterwards. So there's these minute little layers, and I defy anyone to remove those and replace them afterwards. Because every time you peel it off, you gotta put it back on again. So uh, challenges occur there. Um, tools uh, for masking. So uh, very important, the straight edge and a knife. And the other one that I find very important are dividers. Oh, and before I get to that, just go back. The other one is masking fluid. So I'm sure we've all used this in, you have not used no. it? Lots of great things you can do with this, and I'll touch on some of it later on, that you can use it for solid masks and for other things. So anyway, that's one of the other masking materials. Uh, back to the tools for when you're masking. Good set of tweezers, uh, dividers. Now, variety of sizes. Dividers are quite useful if you want to do anything that you want to make sure that it's parallel or straight. So the bands on the tail of the, of the Messerschmitt. If you're trying to do pinstriping on a vehicle or you want some vertical lines, you want to make sure when it goes on there that it's going to be relatively straight. So with dividers, you can find yourself a reference point somewhere. So if you want, say, a vertical stripe, you can use your dividers to establish where you want that line, and you can keep moving down with the dividers as you go along, drawing the tape down. So I'll just, um, I'll get a little. Where would you get one of those? The dividers? Yeah. This one is, this is an ancient one that uh, a old landlord gave to me, but that's in a pen and pencil set. 
You know how you, you go to Staples and you get yeah. the, the compass and all that? Well, all that is is a compass, and they, some of them give you a, a point that you can put in instead of. So this is quite nice because it's got the, the wheel on it, so you can roll it out. This one does the same thing. This is a... This was actually made by Moore and Wright in Sheffield, England. So it's real. Yeah, that's a machinist. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, somebody moved out of an apartment and they had a whole bunch of stuff. So he knew I, I liked this. So, um, so what? Busy Bee Tools as well sells stuff like that. Yeah, there's all kinds of dividers you can get. So just to, to, to show the example of the divider is, uh, here, we'll go to familiar territory for me, an airplane. So if I want to do, say, a band around the rear of the fuselage, they give you nice, they give you uh, engraved lines. So what you can do is you can start laying your, your tape on and use your divider to find a reference point. So as you go around, you keep using that reference point all the way around. So the end result is you've got your starting line is straight and level where you want it to go. And then you set the divider for the width you want the opening to be. So, and I find with this, you can actually, if you're very delicate, you can lightly score it to get a line there. And then you take the next piece of tape, I'll just snap this one off. Nope, <laughs> it's off altogether here. <laughs> Do you have any idea what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> you can get the same results at home. <laughs> So by using the divider, I actually did pretty good just sticking it on there, but you, can, you get the idea. And as you start moving around, you can keep going. So it's quite easy rather than using the, the decals they give you for a lot of these bands. It doesn't take that much longer to do the actual masking and paint it on afterwards. And it looks so much better uh, if you can get away with it. Um, the other thing uh, you were talking earlier on about this, this tape and how flexible it is. I had always gone a different route for the longest time. So another important tool to have is a circle cutter. So I bought this from um, Northern Abrasives, you know, the guys at the show all the time. And I think because Jerry bought a really kick-ass high profile circle cutter oh, like you know that's the round one yeah the round one it's like a cadillac so, for tools, so, so yeah, it's amazing i don't mind buying nice tools but at the same time if you have a 20 dollar tool that does the same job as a 70 dollar tool yep you got you know 50 bucks you can spend on a model and you still have your tool <laughs> <here>. so, <laughs> it's a scotsman tip for the day <laughs> so so what i've found i've been able to do is by using your circle cutter you can cut out concentric lines so if you expand it out just a little bit further and then lay it down again let's well, get the right way around from here you end up with a a curved strip so you can see the curved strip in here for the camera there you go <laughs> uh, but the advantage of the curved strip and I made this intentionally thick but you can make it a lot thinner and that gives you the flexibility, much like you would have with this tape, is that you can kink it as you go around. And as always, one way in the curve, it's a pain in the ass to try and put that masking tape on. The other way, it just goes seamlessly. So by using various size curves, you can get away with uh, you know, not having to, to go for the, I'm sure it's a very good price on it, but you know, Adam, would you like to spend six fifty on a piece of white tape yeah, and you can you cut it yourself? Yeah, now you're talking about yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. We don't want to what, upset you. What kind of board are you cutting on? This? That's a, just an old cutting mat. Like, this is a, an ancient cutting mat. I've got a whole bunch of them. I actually work with a lot smaller one because one of the nice things that I find, if you have a big mat, it can't move anywhere. But what's nice here is you can actually spin the mat as you're cutting because every time you spin this, your, yeah. your weight yeah. goes weird and you end up, you don't cut a full circle, you cut maybe 280 degrees of it and then you gotta go back and try and get the rest of it. Yeah. So it helps in that way. Um, not necessarily with masking, but since it's here, this is one of Tony Bell's little tips for scribing, is if you take your Tamiya tape, put it down, and then take the Dymo tape, you know everybody talks about for scribing? Take that, lay it on your Tamiya tape and then cut it out. So when you go to do your scribing, you don't have this sticky ass 
you know, Diamond tape that you're sticking on your model, you've got Tamiya tape, which will hold it in place nicely, and when you peel it off, the adhesive is still there. So you can lay it over the model, and it's not going to go anywhere. Oh. So. Where are you buying Dymo tape? It's hard to find this stuff because it's so obsolete. Well, our, God bless Doug. I'm sure everybody here has a stockpile. Doug, when he was at Lovers, he came in one time <laughs> yeah. with I don't know how many rolls of Dymo yeah, tape, I right? So I've got orange, I've got black, and I'm sure there's other shades there's as well. Blue, and it was like literally boxes of it. Doug, uh, can you can buy that new stuff though now, eh? Like yeah, the, the, I've actually forgot to bring that on, but that's for scribing, not for masking. masking there's a, a clear mask uh, scribing tape which is thicker and the, th the advantage over this is because this is you can't see through it's sometimes when you're trying to line up to reconnect two panel lines you know there's nothing worse in the world think you got it right and you scribe uh -huh. and it's about you know half a millimeter off the other one so the clear one works quite well but Adam, it's not not for the faint well, of heart. You can still tag. buy diamond tape at Michael's. I probably can, yeah. Yeah, have forty percent off. Or go to the, <laughs> the, the the flea market when you're doing. Um, so just going back to various things, masking fluid. So masking fluid is good if you want to cover an area. But what I find is really nice with masking fluid is if you look on the Spitfire and the 109, you see the the wing walks where the guys walked and chipped the paint. So what you do is you take a chunk of foam, right, and you dip it in the masking material, and then all you do is you just, after painting it silver, you just dab a little bit in there and then let it dry. And then what you can do, because, it'll, it, because it's a liquid, it tends to have a, not a shape-founded nature for paint chips, if you will. So I think somewhere in here I've got, uh, toothpicks and all I've done with the toothpicks is I've taken them I've sanded the edge into a chisel so you can just take it and push the masking back so it's more of a scuffed appearance rather than this round circle that's on it how long does this stuff take to dry it dries uh, maybe in two to three minutes like okay. it, not long at all but it's, it's still long <laughs> enough to work with it oh well the idea is and it, the, the trick to it you take it and you dip it in, like, you know, you got a little palette that you got your masking in. You dip it into it, and then I usually use a blotter, and I will try and get rid of as much as I can. It's just like dry brushing. You know, you want to get everything off the brush before you put it anywhere near the model. So that is, you get as much of it you can out, and then you start to go at it. But one thing important, don't try going back over it, because it reaches a tackiness. So when you're going dabbing like this, you're pulling everything up that's already started to dry on it. So frustration will uh, follow afterwards. Um, but if you screw up, it's easy to get off. It's easy enough, and, and all you do is you just take your thumb and rub it off afterwards, like it's... Is it water soluble? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it, it doesn't leave a residue. It's, it's, it's quite, a, quite an effective <laughs> tool. As you can see, it covers over the silver, so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, making, you know, taking that brush afterwards and trying to put the silver paint in. Um, Okay, back to this, the, the tape here. Uh, Dave was showing me something. Where are you, Dave? Oh, he's back there. He was showing me something earlier on which he was doing up to paint wing walks on his uh, flying boat. So with the 109 here, the crosses are painted on it. So you can go out and you can buy your masks, which give you good quality and you know are, are quite quite effective. Or if you'd like to go the the atom route, we'll just use you for example. I mean, it's legit. It's not yeah. Right. Cheap as dirt. Yeah. This involves taking advantage of office uh, equipment and materials, which I'm sure you're yeah, a big like fan that. of. Yep. So taking, uh, say, the decal sheet out of the kit and photocopying it. Right. So you've got a a rough uh, decal, uh, a picture of the decal. And all you do is you cut it out and you lay it on your tape. I make sure it's on the tape. And then you take your clear tape <laughs> and just lay it over top of it. That's pretty awesome. And then all you do is you take your straight edge and you start cutting out the shape. So you can do the, all the elbows for the cross. And in the case of a cross, what I find the easiest way to do it is you cut your elbows out and you have your center cross left behind. You position that in the model, and again, you can use your dividers because with masks, 
It's not like a deck hole where you can put it down and flow it in a situation. Tape is sticky. When it sticks, it's going to stay. So you want to try and make sure you pick your location points that you get things to line up with and then go ahead with your mask. So by putting the cross down where it's supposed to go on the airplane, you've got the general location. You add each of the elbows in the outside when you've got that all the way you want it. Just pull the center cross out. And now you've masked off your four parts of the cross on the outside. Assuming you painted a white first underneath. But that way, you don't have to worry about decal film. You have your cross on there. Same thing with the, uh, the fuselage cross. It's got paint, uh, a painted area in the middle. You do the same thing. And all you do when you're done is you add the elbows back in and mask off where, like, pull out the cross or, and paint away. So. The only difference, I use frisket film for the tape place. Yeah, and Frisket's great. I just, you got Tamiya tape. I know how Tamiya tape works. Uh, these are, are quite good. Uh, you need to have a little sort of insight on how they actually work. Um, they're, they're vinyl masks. I'll pass them around. But what you want to do with it when you're doing a roundel is you want to have datum points on it because when you're peeling it off, you want to make sure that you put it back where it was before. So you'll see that there's marks on some of them. I put some of the masks back on again, and I cover those with a tape. So when you're spraying, you can pull the tape off and see the mask marks. But that allows you to re-add the different parts, and they will line themselves up. So. Well, I meant the frisket film instead of the tape, instead of the clear tape. Well, yeah, you can use a frisket <coughs> film, and I will go to the the cheaper mode. I've got Tamiya tape already, and it's not hard to do. Well, I use the same thing you do. Uh, the Tamiya tape in the bottom, your decal, yeah. print it, and I'll put a frisket film over instead of the clear tape. Yeah, I just, I never... I have a ton of frisket films. So yeah, I've, I've, I've never had frisket film, so uh, I've gone the uh, the more budget what conscious route. frisket film? I hear about it, but I don't know what it's, it is. It's a clear, it's a semi-opaque, uh, white, very thin film with an adhesive on one side. Oh. I got a roll of it because it's just big. Oh, it smokes. Yeah. Duncan, do you put down the white first and then camo, or camo and then white? I put the white down, mask off the cross, the and then paint it. Because you can do it the other way around, but then you're putting white on top of a dark color. Yeah, so to do it properly, you need to put a spray on a light gray and then a white, because you want something that's dense enough and consistent so that when the white goes on, you don't end up with, if it's over an area where there's a demarcation line, you don't want that demarcation line to be running through the middle of it. On the, on the measurement, there's a difference in the tone of the black on the bars and the black on the cross. Well, the cross is a different shade. It's actually the same color as the propeller blades. Yeah, so the black and white for the bands, but it's green inside the cross. So the Spitfire, for example, has got a camouflage pattern on it. And it's not that hard to do. And again, you can have a double action airbrush, or you can use a single action, which I much prefer. Paint goes on a lot better, uh, no problem. So I'll just uh, demonstrate how easy it is to do that. So. Again, I've photocopied a 109 plan. So just for simplistic sake, I'm going to draw what the camouflage pattern. And you can, like Tamiya kits, give you an actual 48 scale plan with the markings. And it's a straight photocopy. So what you want to do is say you want to cover a section on this wing with that part. Now, if you look, OK, I want that. And then you start going like this. The paper's got a fiber. It's going to follow its own path. So what I've found is you have to sort of give it a nudge where you want it to go. So if you take your tweezers and you just score along the edge of the line, and you don't have to, to break through it. You just want to score at the edge of it. So. Just cut it with the scissors. Well, no, I'm going to is start it right to, to get to the back point. But what happens is, is now I can just peel it away, and there's a little bit of a rough edge on it, which almost simulates a free handed camouflage. And then what you can do is when you take it and put it on the model, right, all you do is you wrap this around. 
and you tape it on the underside. Like that. I'll just to, I'm not going to leave it on there. But now you've got a mask on there, so you don't have to worry about trying to get, you know, everything just right. Now there are certain things you have to watch for. If, an example on the underside, there's a large protuberance that this doesn't work too well on. So there's a couple things that you can do for that. And one of the easiest ones to do is you, where's my pencil, here's the knife. So what you can do is you can cut little squares back behind the area, right? And then if you take a piece of Tamiya tape and just lay it on top of the square, when you go to put it on the model, it taps itself down. Now you've got something to hold it in place for you while you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the whole idea is when you're spray painting it, you want to make sure you don't spray in towards the mask. It'll start, you'll get a ghost shadow <laughs> in the end of the process. You want to go straight along the edge. Uh, when you get into this area, you've got a lot of different curves going on at the same time and paper is not exactly the best. So the one thing you can use on there, and I couldn't find the original package, so I've got my little chunk of blue tack. You know, I saw one of the uh, threads on a hyperscale, somebody asked if you can reuse blue tack after it's been painted. And exactly, because as soon as you pull it apart, the chemical composition of it goes back to that tacky state. So what you can do is you just take a little wad of it, and just lay it down. Where's my somewhere around here? What you looking for? The sanding stick. Oh, there it is. So just use your uh, pastry skills <laughs> and just roll it out, and you can take and cut it into a smaller piece and continue rolling it out to the point you want so just you get the general idea and then if you take it and just set it back from the back edge of the paint line that you want this is not going to want to stick too well but and now when you set it back on again it sticks up a little bit further so you can get a little more of a soft edge and it also helps it go around the protuberances that you may deal with just to hold it in place so that when you're spraying the thing suddenly doesn't fly up on you and you're like you know you got your airbrush in one end of all in the other and it's like you got to put the airbrush down and you know go and fix the whole thing so Doug, when, when have you ever used uh, that post-it note adhesive for situations like this? I've used post-it notes sometimes. Um, but it's have it in a spray adhesive too, right? Yeah, I That's just blue stick. I just am reluctant to put any spray anything onto a model before I'm putting paint on it because when, when you're painting, you want to start with as clean a surface as possible. But so I'm saying on the paper mask and then adhere the paint use. Well, you can, but that to, to me that's sort of an extra step. And paper masks have limited use because you need a surface that's going to be forgiving for it as you, as you put it in place. But what I've found, and going back to, I see Brett Green is clearly sponsored by Tamiya Magazine because if you ever see him when he builds his models and he masks the undersurface, he covers every square inch of that model in Tamiya tape, right? You know, he must have cases of this sitting there. <laughs> I'm looking at him going, oh my God, that's like 10 bucks worth of tape on the bottom of a 109. And to Adam's point, I'm not exactly a person that, you know, I'd rather spend money on this and aftermarket than on, you know, the basic tools or going beyond a certain point. So we all remember Mr. Lowry, uh, it was a modeler in Toronto, and Ron was a great scratch builder, but he was a great person for, he'd be sitting somewhere and he'd pick something up and he'd look at it and he'd think about it and, oh, that would make a wheel for a Hanley Page Humbly Pudge. And the next thing you know, it became a wheel. So he was always on the lookout for things that, outside the model realm. And what I discovered that worked really, w that was wonderful for me was, you ever go to kids' parties or birthday parties? You know, everybody has bags now and they put the tissue paper inside of it? 
Well, the tissue paper, if you look at it, it's plasticized, a very thin layer of plastic on one side of it. And the nice advantage of this is, is you can lay it any pattern you want. Okay, so if, say I wanted to mask a large area, I could start with a piece of tape to draw out that line, and then all I do is I backfill it with a piece of this tissue paper, right? So it's nice and flat, it's not going anywhere, and you just run tape at the front of your to tack it in place and up to your, your tape line. No problem about uh, paint creep over on the whole thing, and you don't have to worry about covering large areas of your model. That's what as I do result. on the undersides. I just lay the thing on a piece of paper, trace the outline on the wings, and then cut it a little smaller so I've got, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch or so from the edge. And I just run a bead of Tammy tape around it. Because, yeah, like you said, I'm not spending that. Kind of yeah, time. and no. the advantage of this is, is that it covers, <coughs> it's easy to cover a large area yeah. quickly. And I don't know about you, but it doesn't matter how fastidious I am, I always cringe when I pull that tape off. Is oh, yeah. any paint going to come with yeah. it? And we've all had those experiences. <laughs> you know, that's where you put the model down and you walk away. <laughs> Although I know some people that put the model down in a very <laughs> lofty <laughs> manner, shall we say. <laughs> also, um, recently, I know in some of the European groups they were talking about um, oh. the wrappers that you get your lint chocolates in. It's a similar thing mm. to that. Mm. So if you want to combine two loves, yeah. Or, you know, you, 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 you give she must be obeyed some chocolates and earn some brownie points, you just add some brownies. <laughs> so don't you ma mask the entire thing before you start painting it? Just or do you just do it section by section? I do it as I do it as I need it, yeah, right? So it looks like they could fall off pretty easily. So well, yeah, the, the guy, I'm, I'm just, I'm going super fast on this. Yeah. You know, I'm very fastidious about making sure that everything's tacked down. And what I'll, I'll sit here um, and I will start cutting like just strips of tape, right? And I'll just slice them into smaller groups. So. It, as I'm going, as I'm putting this down, I'm pulling pieces of tape off of here and tacking as I go along. So I'll make sure that this part is exactly where it's supposed to be before I move on. And again, you use common sense. Try and think, you know, work out. If you're holding onto the tip, don't do your tip as the first thing you mask because you'll probably go back and fix it about five or six times. You know, keep your handle as long as you can and then flip around at the last moment to, to do that last part of it. So I, I think it's the old the old eighty twenty rule I found to spend eighty percent of the time masking for the actual twenty percent of shooting the paint. You can mask for two hours and spray for two minutes yeah. Yeah. basically. You mask for three hours and spray for one minute. Yeah. Yeah, and I, uh, Larry has a Skyhawk here, and when he was painting, the Skyhawk in the back, it's got a very low demarcation line between the white and the gray, and it's right on the edge of the curve. So, and it's ideal for a paper mask where you would just, you know, there's your serrated line that you have, and you want to, to lay it here. So, as you can see, if you spray in that, you get a really nice. Uh, soft edge all the way around it. The only problem is you got all this down below. So what I've found that works quite well, if you want to hold it in place, is you just cut yourself little tabs so that if you bend these in, and again, this is just rough to give you the idea, but you can lay it here, and now you have these nice little tabs so you can run a piece of tape on the bottom while it stays upright on the side. So you don't have to worry about every time you hit this, pulling it off, the tape will hold it in place. So you can get a nice straight edge doing it that way. Duncan, what about uh, cockpits and wheel wells and that sort of thing? Cockpits and wheel wells when you're painting. Thank you, Dennis, you reminded me of something I have here. Again, with the foam. Foam is a wonderful thing to have, and all you do is you take it and you pop it into your cockpit. And now your cockpit is sealed off, you don't have to worry about. And if you're worried about interiors in there, you can cut it into smaller chunks. I've made a lot of little thin pieces here, which you can actually slide down the back. Same thing works for wheel wells. When you have wheel wells, or if you've got to fill an intake that you've already painted, you know, you can shove the foam in, you can cut it as small as you want, and just shove it in and 
No, it works remarkably well for that. In 72, I don't know about bigger scales. Silly Putty. Silly Putty works really well. Won't feel any pain. I've never lost pain to Silly Putty. The only thing is, I've, I've heard some people have had problems with Silly Putty leaving a residue. So that's my only observation. Okay, I've and never again, had it happen, but Blue Tack. You get blue tack, I find residue. No, uh, not with this. I, the, this blue one I have, and there's a white one as well that I bought at, um, I think, Mercury when they were still around. It was the, the same thing. And all, it, the, all the stores now have white tack. Yeah, they've gone to the white one. But I haven't experienced residue issues. If I buy a name brand blue tack, it's always seems to be better than, let's say, the stuff you get at the dollar store. Actually, one of the issues I have is I heat my kits, like I power dry them in a dehydrator, and it wants to melt. The blue tack. I'm only at 45 degrees, which is very hot, but it tends to make it want to not Maybe it's come also off. Maybe the chemical composition. A little bit. It still works great when you're done with it, but it, it does weird stuff, and the silly putty doesn't. And you don't get creep out of the silly putty? No. If it's there for. Not if it's silly brand silly putty. I, again, dollar store mm -hmm. stuff might, but. And then uh, the one that everybody hates to do is canopies. Especially oh, yeah. Japanese canopies. Yes, well, 110, I'd say, is probably yeah, up there as well with, with multi-frames. Again, not hard, not fast, right? So when I'm doing canopies, what I will do is, say this is the area that you want to do, I'll cut a strip and a 45 degree angle. So all I'll do is I'll fill from the corner. You've got a straight edge. So you make this your point in the corner and you run your tape along here. And you can cut it so that you're doing the same thing from either end so you don't have to worry about getting an exact measurement. You can overlap in the center. And it's just 45 degree angles all the way around and then you just drop a square in afterwards and you've masked your square area. Same thing in you're doing like a Spitfire. Around the front there, you've got that nice sort of curve piece that comes at the top. There's two ways you can do that masking. One of them is you can use a circle cutter and you can cut curves and chop them into little pieces. And even if the curve's not right, you can lay them on top of one another to, oh, get, like a French curve. to get the curve that you want. Yeah, okay. The other one that works is Dennis made a wonderful punch set in 1991, I think. Years ago. It was, <laughs> they, it, when I first joined the club, Dennis made these, this punch set, and I still have it. And the nice thing with the punch set you can use is if you take Tamiya tape and put it on a piece of 10 or 15 thou plastic, slide it in, and punch out your disc, peel the tape off, you've got a round piece of tape which you can lay on it, and you also have nice punched out plastic discs that you can save and use for something else later on. Now, Dennis had a variety of different sides, because I think it would be based on drill bits, weren't they? Absolutely. So yeah. you can, whatever, if you've got one of those sets, uh, I made the, the die set, if you like, large enough that you can expand it. So all you do is go buy a drill bit, Yeah. make sure your, your drill's half-ass good, and come on down through, and then cut the shank off the drill bit, that's your punch. Yeah, it's, they, they work amazingly well, and it's like almost 30 years now I've been using I'm sure they probably could be sharpened, you know. You can but, do that with that thing too. Yeah, I wouldn't trust myself sharpening them though, you know. <laughs> Listen, just a quick, if you're, just put the, put the punch through, through the die plate, right? And so it just, and then use the back of it, and then just get like, you know, uh, a stone or whatever. You don't care about the bottom mm -hmm. of this one. Okay. okay. Did you maybe bring that in? Because people would love to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dug yourself a hole there. Uh, I think I've covered most of the areas. Um, I brought a couple of, I'm painting a 109 right now, so uh, there's a, what I've done here is I'm doing a finished 109, so the um, uh, German markings are painted over. So the crosses I painted onto the wing, much like that one, and then I cut a rough oversize, and I can pass around and see, it's got a, you can take them and you can see I use the, the tweezers to make the the rough sort of uh, mark and then peel it out so it looks like somebody's taken a brush and brushed over the cross really quickly so I don't have to worry about brush painting it I just lay it down and I do it like one elbow at a time so you know you spray you go work on the other wing by then if it's dried enough you can work your way around and you've got little pieces of tape to sort of position it where you want, and then I backfill it 
with this just so that I don't have to worry about you just, overspray. You just scored it? I just scored it with the tweezers and then use the tweezers to, to sort of peel it out. You can see it's really rough. Um, you know, I tried, I did a bunch of different ones to get different effects so it doesn't all look uniform the whole way around. But very straightforward and it didn't take long to do. And the same thing, the, um, the finished round on the fuselage was actually overpainted and the smaller one went on it. So there's a, the original white roundel and you can see where it's been painted over. So I used paper masks to put over my white roundel and then sprayed a softening like somebody sprayed over it, but the white will still show through that way. Yeah. I did something with the mask on the science fiction kit for the sci-fi guys out there. And I had a, I made a mask of a piece of window screen so I cut a rectangle shape the size What's of the that for that panel. thing you did? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. No, no, it was for the, um, for the, um, uh, what was it? Babylon 5 ship that I did? Oh. Yeah, and it's got this mesh pattern on the whole. It's like a model mesh pattern. So I just cut a rectangle in a piece of paper, and I put the window screen behind it and taped it on, and I did like you did with a larger piece of paper and the tape around the outside. And I could move it and I could lightly spray through it, and it gave me a really cool looking mesh pad, just one panel at a time. Yeah. I like started, did one at the front, and then one at the back, and then one at the front, and then one at the back, to give them time to dry, so I keep moving my mask back and forth. But it gave a really good, you know, it's a 5,000 scale model, right? So it makes it look very busy and gives it a sense of scale. I bought, uh uh, Ultracast is carrying Ushi, uh, Van Roden or whatever their name is. Austin, yeah. yeah, but they've come out with these the little photo etched uh, plates and they've got, it's all irregular holes in it. And I think in the new Tamiya magazine, Spencer Pollard uses it to paint his P38. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I'm, I'm dying to try it out on an overall one color scheme because the idea is, is you put these irregular dots all over and then another filter of the original color to soften it. So you get the, the patina is varied all the way through rather than it's all one color. In, in this case, he was using it for all of drab, I believe. That's cool. Yeah, he also used it on um, his Vulcan bomber yeah. camo scheme, and it looked really good. Okay, I'm interested to try it out and see how it works. Have you ever tried using that adhesive gold finish on complicated canopy? Bare metal foil? I've, I've seen people, I, I must have pissed off the bare metal foil gods, because <laughs> I furnished that. Really? Yeah, I can, yeah, you know, <laughs> I know people have crosses to bear. Um, but I burnished that like there's no tomorrow, and it's like, you know, a good breeze, and it starts pulling up at the edge, so I don't know. I do it. I, I do it. I find biggest secret with that is, yeah, as you say, take a take a toothpick, make it dull, burnish the hell out of it, and then you have to, have to use a brand new blade. Yeah. And it's not even a number 11. I use the curved one. I think it's a number 22. And you actually push push against it so you can see. Um, someone who's got a YouTube channel with the dentist guy is Budzik. Yeah, he he has it, and I use his technique, and that works. That works. Yeah, that almost makes it. No, I will. I'll never say canopies are a pleasure, but it makes it more tolerable and less screaming. On the YouTube front, uh, I'll watch today the most amazing piece on paint that I've ever seen. Anybody interested in? The chemical composition of paint. Will Patterson just yeah. came out with. Yeah. Oh yeah. Apparently, it was in a magazine. I think that, that, he, that he was publishing magazine this this whole thing about paint, mm -hmm. yes. and he waited until the magazine was out of sale. Wasn't on sale anymore because he didn't want to compete. Yeah. Got news for you. It's just went on sale in Canada this week. Did it? Yeah. Oh. It did. Okay. So he. <laughs> I guess screw Canada. Anyway. <laughs> It is the most interesting, if you're interested in chemical, like, you know, we, the old star, this, this story about, is to me a really, uh, a water-based paint, is it not, it really isn't, how come it's flammable. He talks about how paint is made, like, how it bonds and blends. It's amazing, but it, it clarifies everything about what is what in paint and thinners. Yeah. So. Watch right. it. Well, thank you very much. Any questions, sir? Did I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank Thanks, you. Duncan. No problem. Thanks, Duncan.